All right. Hi, everybody. Picking up where we left off. Now what I want, I'm going to use multiple variables in Prism. This is going to be different than XY, where you can change the colors and stuff. This gives you the ability to adjust size. It gives you ability to do color gradients on continuous data, et cetera, et cetera. Now, like I said, kind of in my cutoff of the last video, this can be fairly clunky to use. It is, it's sort of a different user format than the typical Prism. Let's go ahead and dive in and see what we're up, up with. First thing, I also want to get rid of my old contingency stuff. I don't want to save that big thing. Okay. So looking at this data, I've kind of been highlighting some, you know, some more qualitative factors where I've turned quantitative stuff into quals like these. Did, did you attend 90%? Then you're a high. Did you pass? That's turning a 70% into a yes and anything below into a no. Did you work over 20 hours a week? A yes or no. But again, I still have all this raw data right here. So what I want to do and what Prism is going to be very good at, I'm going to take all these columns right here. I'm going to copy those in. What Prism is going to do is probably it's going to be able to auto detect stuff. So notice here attendance, it notices that's a number. And so it knows it's a continuous variable. It can go up and down. And that's why you got the histogram. The little bars are, they've detected. This is a categorical variable. So can kind of detect that with the text does pretty well with that. You can force it to label it something else if you want. Um, one problem that people typically have is sometimes if you're saying like um, attendance, high or low, and you call that um, like a one or a zero, this will then yell at you and be like, "Is it's a number. You can force it to say one or zero um, by making sure it says categorical on there. All right, what other factors can we grab in here? I want to get, I want to get the class percent. I want to get the lab percent grade. Let's take a look here. Because again, with this format, you can add all this stuff in. We're going to choose what we what we make with this. So I like these data, um, D2L visit percents. That's that's actually not like bad. So that's like our online module thing. Notice too, I've got some gaps in here, um, some Ws and stuff. Anytime that like it shows up without a number in the thing, that entire row usually gets canned if this value is trying to be used. Um, it's okay. At least it does it automatically for you and doesn't get confused. But yeah, usually it can't use like partial data in a lot of cases. All right. Um, these are some Likert scales. I want to do rate financial stress because that's something I'm actually kind of interested in seeing. And again, there's our first one. Notice that this was on a Likert scale. Make sure that's good. Okay, this is on a Likert scale, so it thinks that this is a like raw number. I'm gonna turn that into categories, and notice it turns kind of yellow like that because it's saying you forced me to read this as a category, not a true number. Okay, going back, kind of thing. Last little things that we would do here: um, daily. Uh, how many hours? Oh wait, we're I'm missing like one of the big ones. Um, Current semester, how much are you working for average? Okay, let's go here. Hours working, done. Okay, I'm going to say another good, I'm trying to think, how many credits are you currently taking? That might not be bad. Yeah, I'm not going to use GPA in the video just to be safe. All right, so now we got 162 patients, quote unquote, stacked with data. Here comes the cool capability of this version of Prism, this, this facilitation. And this is, like I said, this has only been out for like a year or two. It's pretty cool. You come to this sheet right here in the graph section. You want, you will direct what variables to put. My study, what I really like looking at is again, in this case, and I'm kind of going to mess with independent versus um, dependent variables in this case. Why? Oh, shoot. Look, it said my class. Okay, yeah. So I almost made that mistake. I was looking for class total percent, and it was like one there because the X and Y variables need to be numerical and continuous. Look, it saw those W's in there. So it thought that's categorical. Make it a continuous. Make any number continuous. Yep, see. So anytime you have like an X or like an NA or something in there, it may not recognize that. All right, I think we're now ready. Let's go new graph. Okay, I want to say in the X, even though, let's see, attendance percent, let's do hours working. 
Okay, color group. Yeah, I want attendance right there. I'm going to see, I want to do that. I want to see financial stress as bubble size too. Now, what we're about to do, two things that I'm actually changing here. Technically in color, I could do a continuous variable, um, D2L visits, for example, and have a big like colorful gradient. Right now I am choosing a categorical, so I'm only going to have a choice between specific colors, a yes and no in this case. Financial stress for bubble size, I'm going to have a choice from one to five. Let's see how this works. I'm kind of experimenting with this. It kind of looks nice. I can't, I can't lie. All right. So this actually didn't go too bad for the first round. Sometimes these come out really crazy. All right. Class total percent, 100 hours working. How many total hours are you working? Attendance, high and low. Financial stress, one through... Okay, I don't know what... See, clunkiness. I don't know why it's saying that one out of on the scale is a, is a smaller number. <laughs> Uh, yeah. All right. So probably what I should have done on the Likert scale is adjust these to letters and said like extreme, little bit good, low, et cetera. No, I might change that one out. Okay. Focus on the colors. Dang. If you attend high, you're doing better. And if you attend high, you mostly are not working as much. Notice that. But notice that. One thing I want to do here. Notice that also... The formatting over here is a little different than usual. It still has that like auto detect range, things like that. I'm going to say, give me to 110 since I want it to cut off at 100, but kind of want to do 20 as the interval. You can do some ticks. So I think there's like four ticks right there. It'll auto update just like that. And then here's hours working. Perfect. And I can also say start me at like, you know, 20%. So this gets a little, gets a little bigger. Okay. Intervals at 20. Oh, sorry. Yeah, starting at 20 is minimum. Okay, there we go. All right, looking pretty good. So if I wanted to change these factors right here, you can double click the, well, see, there it is, clunky, sorry. Don't double click the little legends because it'll take you into formatting stuff like size and stuff. Click one of your data points and it will actually take you to sort of this big master setup thing. It'll ask you again, do you want to change your X and Y variable? Go to data objects. And you can find all kinds of goofy, fun features. Now, colors right now, I've got high versus low colors. Um, I don't really technically have a color scheme, but for high attenders, I could maybe do like a nice dark green to say happy. Um, the low attenders, why don't I keep that, that kind of sad red right there? Yeah, you're going to keep getting stuff like that. Data objects in this case is you're still going to also find fill in border. Like if I want a nice border, fourth fourth black border right there. That's great. That looks pretty good. Like starts to crisp things up pretty well. Let's go back. Data objects. Let's look at size. Let's see if I can actually change this. All right. Yeah. So I can manually change size here. So let's try that. So group one is low financial stress. So I want them to be like a two. Group two. Yeah. You know, let, let's just make this easy on ourselves. <laughs> let's start there. Yeah, let's just do this. We may have to adjust the size in a bit, but yeah, I kind of, I kind of uh, over, there we go, let's apply. All right, so notice a five on the scale is actually pretty, it's pretty small, but I was able to manipulate and get my stuff all set up better. Like I said, it's a little clunky, but it is fun. Yeah, but now I'm gonna go all, now I'm gonna go all like crazy on this. All right, so let's do, let's do it as times two of each, of each uh, Likert scale. Come on, there we go. And 10. All right. So let's see if this size factor kind of helps us there. Nice. There you go. I think that kind of, I think that's good visualization right there. A lot of high, a lot of high stress. The more that you work, basically, I'd say. But yeah, that color separation is definitely tough. What you can also do is say, all right, like if I want, um, if I want certain, I mean, this, things are getting a little goofy here. If I want to show connecting lines, for example, or a vector plot, like try that. <laughs> that looks really cool. And you can definitely mess with it. Um, that's more for like, if you're doing advanced, like PCA type stuff. Um, I mean, but at the end of the day, like technically we do start from 0% in the class of technically everybody doesn't work at a zero until they decide to. So, but again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put these on. So. Looks cool, but yeah, I'm kind of just 
getting crazy about stuff. Labels is tough. Um, if I had put in like, you know, student, random student ID number or name or whatever your name is, like they don't have names. They just have a rando number. Um, I don't actually have a label in there, a label category. It will label all of them and you cannot move those little labels. It's really bad. So it'll get really dense in here and like really black with all the labels. You would have to go into Adobe Illustrator and like move them pixel vector by pixel vector. Yeah, like I said, in XY plots in, in Prism, you can actually move the labels as much as you want. Here, not so much. Okay, so these data are not really... I'm, I, I hesitate to do this because these data are not strictly um, PCA style data. Why don't I hmm, why don't I add a few more continuous pieces of data and then we will give a PCA a shot. This is not a PCA explanation video though because I'm not trying to like take 40 minutes of your time. Um, but give me some, let's get some exam data in here. Let's see if uh, let's see if this gives us a good value in here. So again, yeah, correct these, make sure these are continuous, yep, yeah, because we had the Ws in there. All right, so if I wanna do a new analysis, um, correlation matrices are really cool where it's gonna correlate all the factors and show you how much each can do. That's also something you can do in Morpheus, by the way. Um, yeah, let's hit PCA, why not? So for options, um, I typically say, select principal components based on the percent of total explained variance. Um, also, if, you, if you're not a PCA person at this point or you haven't watched the training, I'm going off into the jungle a bit here really quick. So it's okay if you're like, I'm not good with this. Just leave me. All right, labels, row numbers. Um, let's take a look, run them. PCA on Prism is, um, it's pretty nice. It's fairly user-friendly. It still gives you most of the stuff that you want. So if I want to say like, all right, there's everything ascribed to PCA values. Um, you get your eigenvalues for each PC, hooray. So typically eigenvalues you wanna trust, you trust something that is 1.0 or greater. So it looks like we actually have three dimensions we could use. With the loadings, we can see what is influencing PC1 in this case. So class total percent, that kind of makes sense that, yeah, like that's gonna be the main driver. So in this direction, it's going, it's going negative, obviously. Um, kind of show that. And that's got four PCs here, contribution of each factor to each PC. So as you can tell, in this case, total class percent influences things the most because technically that's the end. I should actually probably delete that. Um, but residually you can tell exam three is the biggest sort of indicator for the main PC. PC two is always just the opposite axis of PC one, hence the small contributions then from the large contributions of PC one. Variance versus PC, PC scores, contribution of each case, for example. It's going to give you who loads and who influences what direction here. It did look like the credits one. It took that as a continuous variable and said, like, how much credit influence does. Doesn't look like it does a ton. But yeah, hours working is kind of on its own down here. Kind of indicating it's driving some of the force and the data in here. Again really nice little little by plots that it's going to make for you again though like semi um a little semi disorganized but it can still be good to like take a look and see your eigen data see if you can use this as a pca see if you get to that threshold of about 70 percent with two of them and we don't actually so i actually maybe would not trust this as a pca sadly anyway all that fun stuff aside Multiple variables in Prism is a really fun way to get really cool stuff on here. Um, again, you can you can be a lot more creative than even I was right here. So if I want to say the variable, I want to say what what was their lab percent maybe, and now I'm going to get like a really cool like Viridius grid like this. Watch that. There you go. Like low lab attendance is in purple. Look at them. They're not doing well over here or low low or low sorry lab performance. You can kind of see that top being yellow up here. They're doing pretty well if they're doing well in the class that kind of makes sense and that you start to see that blue begin over here that's kind of a boring one since like lab percent is going to inform class percent um here so let's try one more and then i promise i'm i'm out of here lab percent let's do how much did they visit d2l there we go 
There you go. Oh, that doesn't actually look good. <laughs> There's actually a lot of yellow and green high kind of just everywhere. Um, and there's lots of low visitors that did fine or don't work either. So, I mean, that kind of makes sense. Like, do you need to go to every topic in the learning platform to know everything? Yeah, probably not. So, um, all right. Now I'm in here, though. I want to see, see exam one versus exam two. Oh, yeah. I want to see all this now. D2L visits content. Yeah, this looks really pretty. Yeah. All right. So now let's say, uh, let's do attendance percent on here. Yeah. I mean, that, that looks pretty good. What about 20 plus workers apply? Ooh, that's that actually looks pretty good too. Um, As far as size, you can do, I mean, yeah, I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to do, I'm doing too much now. Okay. I'll do pass, apply. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, it's super fun to mess with. But like I said, it can be a little clunky. Just give it some roles. And it's a really fun way to display a lot of data. So anyway, thanks for bearing with me. I had some pauses in this one. So super appreciate.